Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to be reviewing the coronary circulation system. So first off, the coronary circulation refers to the blood supply to the heart itself. So just like every other organ in the body, the heart organ also needs a blood supply so that it can function properly. It needs blood for oxygen nutrients and it also needs a place to dump its waste product and get it disposed of. The coronary system consists of the coronary arteries which bring oxygenated blood to the myocardium or the heart muscle and the coronary veins which bring deoxygenated blood right back into the right atrium. Here I have a very general drawing of the heart. I have the right left atrium, I have the right left ventricles, I have the aortic valve coming right off of the left ventricle and going straight into the aorta. The aortic valve is super relevant to the coronary system because the right and left coronary arteries branch off of this aortic valve. And we're gonna take a super close look at that here on the right hand side. Here I have a close-up of the aortic valve. On the left-hand side, I'm drawing the aortic valve during systole. Remember, during systole, the ventricles are contracting and they're pushing blood up through this aortic valve. So these valves are open or the cusps are open and blood is flowing through them and going to the aorta. As mentioned before, this aortic valve is special to the coronary system because this is where the right and left coronary arteries stem out from. So these coronary arteries are kind of like straws and they puncture through this valve. So half of the straw or part of the straw is in the inside of this valve and that's the way it's able to collect blood. Again, during systole, the ventricles are what we call in the active phase and they are contracting. The pressure from this contraction will push these valve flaps open so that blood can forcefully flow through one way to the aorta. Now during diastole, the ventricles are in the resting phase of the heartbeat, meaning they are relaxed. At this time, there is no pressure on the valves, so they are closed shut and no blood is rushing through them. However, there is a little bit of backflow of blood, just enough for the right and left arteries to slurp some up. So remember I said these arteries are like little straws and that bit of backflow of blood falling into these arteries will eventually be taken to the myocardium. So with every heartbeat, the coronary system is being fed blood through diastole phase and also there is a slight relaxation of the entire heart for a very, very short period of time after each heartbeat and during this time, the coronary arteries will fill up with blood as well. So the heart muscle is normally consistently getting fed with blood, oxygen, nutrients as the heart is beating. Okay, so just in case you didn't understand my drawing here, which is totally understandable because I'm not an artist, I have my favorite diagram that I ripped out of my old textbook. So you can use this as reference. It has both the diastole and the systolic phases, just as I have drawn here. Alrighty guys, so now we know how the myocardium gets its blood via the right and left coronary arteries. Now let's look at the arteries and veins that wrap around the heart. The coronary system is split into arteries and veins. Arteries take oxygenated blood to the myocardium and veins bring back deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. It goes into the right atrium just like all the other deoxygenated blood does so that it can be replenished in the lungs. So here I have an anterior view of the heart, which is the front, and the posterior view of the heart, which is the back. I've only labeled the aorta and the aortic valve here because it's all that is relevant for now. So it's only important that you know exactly where these two structures are. So starting off with the pulmonary arteries. First off, we have our right coronary artery. On the anterior portion of the heart, it wraps around like this. 
and on the posterior portion of the heart it wraps around on the bottom portion so basically it wraps around the anterior and posterior part of the the heart so i'm going to label it number one so again this is the right coronary artery this supplies blood to the right portion of the heart in general so the lateral side the right atrium right ventricle also very important and unfortunately i forgot to leave this out but it also supplies blood to the sa node and as we know sa node is super important because it initiates the heartbeat so normally you would see it here so where i drew the number one um, it would be between the number one and the aortic valve. There would be a little extension artery that goes to the SA node and supplies blood to the SA node. This artery is called the sinoatrial artery. Next, we have the right marginal artery. This branches right off of the right coronary artery and it descends downwards towards the apex of the heart. This also supplies blood to the right portion of the heart as well as the apex of the heart, the right and left ventricles. So we'll label this number two. Number two is the right marginal artery. Next, we have the posterior descending artery, also called the posterior interventricular artery. The reason why it's called interventricular artery is because it goes through the interventricular septum, that which separates the right and left ventricles. So this branch is right off of the posterior side of the right coronary artery. This artery supplies blood to the interventricular septum as well as the lower portions of the apex of the heart and the right and left ventricle. Okay, so next we have this area called the crux, C-R-U-X. It's called that because it makes sort of a cross with these two arteries crossing. So the area where these two arteries meet right here, this is the crux and this is where there's an extension of a small artery called the AV nodal artery. And you guessed it, it t it's the artery that takes blood to the AV node. Next, we have the left main coronary artery. This branches right off of the aortic valve and it's fairly short. So what you see here is basically how short it is. I drew like a little notch uh, at the end of the artery so that you don't get it confused with the artery that continues and you'll see that later. But basically this small little section number five that is the entire artery of the left main coronary artery and this supplies blood to the anterior portion of the top part of the heart so mostly the left atrium our next artery starts at the left main coronary artery and branches off from it it descends towards the bottom apex of the posterior part of the heart so you see here it starts here and it goes down 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 towards the end towards the posterior part of the heart and then it starts curving back up. We will label this uh, number six and this is called the left anterior descending artery, also called the left anterior interventricular artery. And this is because a portion of the posterior part of the artery or the portion that's on the posterior side of the heart, you can see it kind of goes towards the interventricular septum. Next, we have the left circumflex artery. This branches directly off of the left main coronary artery. As you can see here, it goes to, um, over around the anterior to the posterior side of the heart, and it gives blood to the mostly the left upper atrium and all that area around there. So I'm drawing a little notch here because I want you to see clearly that this seems like it could be one long artery, uh, number five and seven, but these are two. Number five is the left coronary artery, and then it continues to the uh, left circumflex artery. So just uh, keep that in mind. It's not just one long artery, it's two. 
This wraps up all of the pulmonary arteries. There is one last thing I want to say about these arteries before we move on to the cardiac veins. So these are called end artery, which means that there is no overlapping in arteries in a specific region. So there are no other arteries to compensate the job if one of these arteries fails, fails to do its job and bring blood supply to a, a portion of the heart. So what this means is that if an artery fails to function, let's say, for example, because of a clot, then if there's a clot, there's a blockage. And then there's an area that is depending on this artery for blood, and it will not get this blood because there's a blockage. So that area will be at high risk for becoming ischemic because tissue without blood will die. So this can lead to really bad complications. In fact, it could lead to cardiovascular infarction or a heart attack or a cardiac arrest. So the takeaway here is that these end arteries, if there is a blockage, it is big time bad for them because there's no compensation. There's a high risk that this uh, part of the heart muscle will die away and lead to further complications. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to our coronary veins. As mentioned before, the coronary veins are bringing deoxygenated blood from the myocardium back to the right atrium so that they can have a chance to go to the lungs and pick up oxygen. So our first vein is the great cardiac vein. It starts around the apex of the heart, it goes through the interventricular septum and it ascends upwards towards the left atrium and then it wraps around the heart towards the posterior side and it ends around the middle where we call the coronary sinus. So this we're going to label A and again it's called the great cardiac vein. Next we have the coronary sinus. You can see this on the posterior portion of the heart. It is that thick portion where all three veins are going to meet and you'll see this once we draw all of the coronary veins but they basically all meet up at the coronary sinus and at the coronary sinus the deoxygenated blood is taken to the right atrium so here i've drawn a small uh, heart diagram just a quick diagram so that you can see and remember that the coronary sinus opens up inside of the right atrium and deoxygenated blood from the myocardium is dumped in here and then it circulates with the rest of the deoxygenated blood to get oxygenated next we have the middle cardiac vein and this runs through the middle portion of the heart hence the name uh, middle cardiac vein so this attaches also to the coronary sinus because like i said all of the major veins coronary veins are going to meet up at the coronary sinus and dump their deoxygenated blood there Lastly, we have our small cardiac vein. So we're going to label this D. This extends from the coronary sinus and it wraps around the heart and it, on the anterior side of the heart, it kind of go, descends downwards towards the apex of the heart. So here, don't get this confused. I've labeled this A, B, and D. These are three separate veins or three separate regions. A is your great cardiac vein, B is your coronary sinus, and D is your small cardiac vein. And then remember this small cardiac vein extends down to the anterior portion of the heart, so I'm gonna label both of them D. And with that, this concludes the whole coronary system. I hope you found this helpful, friends. Until next time.